Hi guys, this is the Audi Fool, and for today, we're going to review the VTV amplifier, Purify amplifier with the Sparkos 2590 op amp. What I like the most about the VTV Purify Amplifier is that you have loads and loads of power. And not just any kind of power, but super clean, lick off the amplifier clean power. It can easily do 2 ohms, so you can be sure that any speaker will be driven to its max potential to any volume that you can practically handle without breaking up. You have well-defined controlled bass, it's crystal clear, and you have a neutral sound signature which I still find enjoyable. You can roll op amps if you like. You can change the sound to be even more neutral or more musical depending on your taste. Plus there's even an option for tubes. It's light, cool and efficient and what's more it's that NAD even uses it for their flagship M33 so I don't see how you can go wrong. What I don't like about the VTV Purify Amplifier is that well it doesn't look anything special so it's a bit spartan and it could do with a bit more Deaf in the sound stage and maybe a bit longer decay, but those are my preferences, and those preferences may be easily rectified by using the your preferred preamp or op amp. And that's practically it. I don't have anything else against it, so I've been audio fooled. Power is so clean you can lick it off the amp. If you want to know more details about the comparison, please keep on watching. There's nothing fancy about the VTV Purify amplifier. You have the VTV and Purify logo up front and a blue LED power indicator which you can dim or turn off completely. Shallowly finned on the sides and some vent holes on top, so it's either this case design is super efficient or not necessary because this amp doesn't heat up at all and even on a very hot day it's only slightly warmer than room temp after running all day. At the back, you just have the XLR inputs, speaker outputs, and power. So quite simple, but a powerhouse capable of providing 227 watts, 8 ohms, almost doubling to 424 watts at 4 ohms, and measured to do 450 watts at 2 ohms, so this should drive any speaker to its max capability. First, we compare to the Meek 20 Watt shit Agier using the Yggdrasil Freya Plus and Kefeles 50s. Despite having only 10th the power, I preferred the Asia in 4 out of 5 tracks, tested only in trials for the past, as the bass was better controlled but still quite a blast in the Purify. There's just a bit more meatiness to the music in the Asia that suited me more, but it wasn't an easy choice and this could easily go to the Purify depending on your preference. So it goes for the genre of selection where bass intensive tracks would be best heard in the Purify. Unexpectedly. The bass is actually louder in the Aegir, but just sounds smoother and tighter in the Purify. Mids are also richer in the Aegir, giving piano notes a more substantial feel, and it also feels just a tad more fluid, unlike the Purify where the decay is a bit more abrupt. Vocals are also more upfront in the Aegir, but the Purify isn't too shabby. Treble feels slightly darker in the Purify, giving it a more relaxed feel, but also seems to have more resolution, more textures as a result. Where the Purify stumbles for me is in the sound stage, as it does not sound as steep as the Aegir and there's a bit more space going to the back instruments. But the Purify does sound inky black. If sound was just the basis, then the Aegir would be the better amp for me as I treasure its mid-range fluidity and sound stage depth. But as it is, the Purify sounds almost as good and you have more than 10 times the power. The Aegir would be the better amp if you have similar preferences to mine and you have a smaller room or you have very efficient speakers. So the Purify is the easy practical choice giving you whatever volume you want, whatever the size of your room or whatever your speakers are. And you can simply just get a preamp that colors the sound to your taste, plus it's a no-brainer for measurement freaks. Next. We put it up against the Rega Lizard R using the Tecton Impact Monitors. I just mentioned that the Purify sounds almost as good as the Aegir's and against the Illicit R, it shows as I preferred it in 4 out of 5 in my test tracks. The Rega has a more fun approach to sound and sounds a little bit bass and treble boosted, while the Purify is all about transparency giving you exactly what is in the recording. No doubt, 
dance hall and electronica will be more fun to listen to with the Rega, but for everything else, I choose you, Purify. Bass volume is louder, much louder in the Rega, that it might actually be considered too loud when compared side by side to the Purify. The Purify does it nice and controlled, but doesn't feel lacking at all. Mids are thicker, has more textures in the Purify, as well as having more forward vocals, as the Rega sounds a little bit lean. Highs are tingler in the Rega, highlighting sharp edges more and drowns out the tinier details that you can easily hear without fuss in the Purify. Soundstage depth is just about the same, though it's just a bit wider in the Lizard R. There's still more separation in the Purify, and again, the Purify is as quiet as a mouse in silent passages. Fun or neutral? It's your choice. And while the Riga is about more than twice the price of the Purify, it also has a preamp built in, including a very decent phono stage. Still, I can't help but think that the Purify has a lot more power and runs so much cooler and more efficient because the Riga really gets hot in its casing. So I think there's a lot more value in the Purify. You can just get a, say, a Topping D90 or a SMSL M400 if you're not into vinyl, and you have a super transparent setup that most measurement freaks will die for, at least in paper. Finally, we test it out against the AG monoblocks using the ATC SEM19s. As expected, I preferred the monoblocks completely. I didn't really plan on including it since the AG already sounds better for me, but I just wanted to see if going monoblocks would be well worth it over the Purify. Where the bass was what kept the single AG from taking the final star, going mono improves it enough to take it. There's still more volume in the dual AGRs, and while it does clean up a bit, the Purify still sounds better controlled. Mids are similarly richer, more forward, and more fluid in the dual AGRs. There's also more resolution using two AGRs, and it seems to be clearer. Soundstage is still deeper and provides more room for instruments to be in. And finally, both seem to be equally quiet or perhaps I've reached the limitations of my room. It's $2,500 for a Freya Plus and two AGRs versus $1,750 for a Saga and the VTV Amplifier Purify. So in that extra $750 would give you about 30% improvement, which I think is about proportionally fair if you like the AGR sound signature. You still have more power and less cables in the Purify though, and I think most people would be quite happy with the Purify sound, especially if you're looking for that neutral balance sound signature. So it's the easy practical choice unless you already have a specific sound signature in mind. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video.